Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at a letter I received in the mail. This was postmarked in Los Angeles. There was no return address. And it just said, from a dyslexic ham in training. And uh, let's take a look at it, because it's got a very good, very basic question in it. It says, I have a hard time figuring out how to understand the radio frequency spectrum. I see radios listed as 1.8 megahertz to 330 megahertz, or maybe 54 megahertz, and 160 through 6 meters, and UHF and VHF. I know this is a bit of remedial math questions for you. Please do an Ask Day video about the math explaining the ham radio frequency spectrum applying to the ham radio bands. Uh, certainly, happy to. Okay, let's take a look at that. Um, if we draw on here a line and we do wavelength, which is represented by the Greek letter lambda up here, and the frequency, which is in, um, well, it's in hertz. Lambda is the wavelength in meters. So this is meters up here. And this is frequency down here. Let's start with a nice central one. 10 million or mega hertz. Notice the capitalization here. HZ is cap H small z. M is cap because it stands for mega. If you did M, that would be a small m, that would be milli, which is pretty tiny, okay? This is exactly 30 meters. Now, what does that mean, okay? If you look at this right here, we'll call it one second and we'll call it one light second. It's the distance that light travels in one second. It's pretty far, 186,000 miles per second, or 300,000 kilometers per second. Um, it's a long ways. Now, the wavelength, if a wave is traveling at this along here, okay, the wavelength is from the positive going zero crossing. Let me mark that in something a little different. The positive going zero crossing to the next positive going zero crossing. This is the wavelength, lambda in meters. We usually measure wavelength in meters. Why? Because <laughs> it's just the way it's always been done. Um, originally started in European countries, but a lot of the early radio stuff came out of Great Britain. But it was uh, Marconi, who was Italian, who did it and brought with him the metric system. Okay, So wavelength is the distance a wave travels. Now, clearly, if it's a higher frequency wave... As it travels one second, it's going to wiggle more times, okay, a high frequency wave. So as the frequency goes up, look what happens. From the positive going zero crossing to the positive going zero crossing, the wavelength is less. This is extremely important and is the basis for everything having to do with measuring radio waves. The faster you wiggle the wave, the shorter distance it will go because, let's say you have a, a wave of 10 megahertz, okay? As it's traveling out at the speed of light, it will have vibrated, not the right word, but close, vibrated 10 million times by the time it gets out to one second that length. So you get 10 million of those wavelengths. Whereas if you go here to three meters, okay, you're at a hundred megahertz. And if you go down to 300 meters, notice these are logarithmic scales, 
you are at one megahertz. Okay, so if you vibrate a hundred million times in that distance, each vibration will be smaller, hence the smaller wavelength. But the frequency, the actual, um, the frequency is the number of vibrations or changes or zero crossings, or positive going zero crossings, per second. So if it's vibrating a lot, it's still going at the speed of light. Frequency doesn't cause it to slow down. It's still going at the speed of light, okay. And because radio waves are a form of light. Light is a form of radio waves. It's all called electromagnetic radiation in an electromagnetic field, or EMF. By the way, that's where the E comes from in uh, Ohm's law equals IR. E is the EMF or electromotive force measured in volts. Okay, be that as it may, we're not talking about volts, we're talking about frequency. Now, note the relationship here. As you cut the wavelength by 10, you multiply the frequency by 10. If you multiply the wavelength by 10, you divide the frequency by 10. So is there a uh, constant in here? Yes, absolutely there is. As one goes up, the other goes down. So if you take the wavelength over the frequency, it's going to be proportional to the speed of light. So as the frequency goes down, okay, to be proportional, the frequency goes down, one over the frequency goes up. So it's the inverse of this. One is the inverse of the other. By the way, if you're curious, you see a little picture that says um, one half lambda equals 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz. And this is in feet. The 468 takes into account a velocity factor of wire of 0.95. Yes, it's true. Uh, radio waves go through wire at uh, uh, sl more slowly than they do in air, which makes for all kinds of fun things happening. But now let's talk about some of the other things that's uh, in your letter. He also asked about things like VHF, UHF. I just put up a video showing how these things uh, go, but here's what it is. Now, let's look at frequency, and we're going to go up by tens again. So we're going to go um, 0 0.1 megahertz. It's 100 kilohertz. Okay, 1 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 100 megahertz, um, 1,000 megahertz. Now, if we were to look at this, we would find that this is, 10 is 30 uh, meters, or, and this is 300 meters, and this is 3 kilometers. Okay, this is 3 meters, and 0 0.3 meters, and so on. So as the waves go up in frequency, they get shorter and shorter and shorter. By the time you get up into the terahertz, and a little bit beyond the terahertz, you will find that you're getting into to infrared and then light. Okay, and then from there into ultraviolet, x-rays, and cosmic rays. Okay, now, um, we're looking here, we've got this kind of a little weird. Let's um, turn this around so that we've got frequency, or uh, wavelength. 
and we've got down here uh, at we're going to do this at 300 kilohertz we're turning the chart upside down 300 kilohertz uh, 3 megahertz 30 megahertz 300 megahertz and so on this range in here is called the medium frequencies this term comes from way back a long time ago these down here are the low frequencies okay these frequencies right here from 3 megahertz remember 3 3 megahertz is a hundred meters so you see thousand meters here okay 10 meters here um, this is high frequencies low frequency medium high frequency people back then thought they had that figured out well then they started to do some work in this range here and what do you do after high frequency you go very high frequency you can tell how inventive they were back then and then this range up here up to three um, gigahertz is ultra high frequencies and yes there are designations going on beyond this too okay now the ham bands uh, I'll show you where the ham bands are the the usual ham bands there are a couple way down here okay um, then we have one here at 1.8 to 2 which is our only medium frequency band and then we have uh, 80 meters which is 3.5 to 4 and then there's one at 7 to 7.3 and then there's well, well, there's the 60 meter frequency in here in the 5 megahertz range. You see the hams have only got little chunks of spectrum and so on. Going up to 10 meters, which is actually a misnomer, since it goes 28 to 29.7, it doesn't actually get up to the genuine 10 meters. But uh, still, there are lots of bands in here. We have... Um, two VHF bands. We have six meters and two meters. In UHF we have um, 70 centimeters. Notice that the bands are named, and I'm going to use this word deliberately, named by wavelength. Why? Tradition. So we've got 160 meters, 80 meters, 60 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. And then up in VHF we have 6 meters, 2 meters, and UHF 70 centimeters and there's some stuff up further okay um, so they're named and remember these are names these are not the exact wavelengths uh, and then when we do antenna work we remember the um, the actual frequency if we look in the chart here this is the U.S. Amateur Bands. It's put out by the American Radio Relay League. And note right there, 40 meters. Okay, 40 meters starts at 7 megahertz and goes up to 7.3 megahertz. And uh, this shows the allotment of which frequencies go with which uh, class of license, okay? Which frequencies go with which class of license. And this uh, chart is readily available. Look for it on the ARRL website. Okay, so I think I have answered all your questions. 
we have the question of what's the difference between the meter designation and the actual frequencies. Okay, what shows on the radio is a frequency. Um, and the terms low frequency, medium, high frequency, very high, so on. Yes, there is a very low frequency and so on. And they go down uh, as, as you might guess. Okay, so um, to our dyslexic ham in Los Angeles, I hope that helps answer the question. And there you have it. If you would like to help this channel financially, you can by going to dcastler.com slash support, which shows you various ways that you can do that. Also, if you would like to participate in the monthly giveaway, uh, this month, which is May uh, 2022, we're giving away the Fifi SDR. This is a little software-defined radio that I picked up a few years ago and have used for a lot of videos. I've since moved up in terms of software-defined radio, so I'm not using that one anymore. So let's give it away to an Augie. And you can find out how to enter by going to decastler.com slash giveaway. And until we next meet, 73.